Hello everyone and welcome to our first mini lecture for general psychology. Today we're talking about what psychology is and talking through some of the uh, founding minds of the discipline. So you can see we're in my uh, new office today. I'm not totally moved in yet, but I'm trying to make myself at home here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. It's hard to pick a really good starting point for when psychology started as a field. People have been sort of thinking about psychology in an informal sense for a long time, all the way back to ancient philosophers. Um, Aristotle, for example, uh, used observation and inquiry to understand the uh, relationship between the body and the psyche, the body and the mind. Um, so he is noted as an early person who was thinking about questions we still think about in psychology. Um, his observa he made observations and then sort of discussed and, and pondered upon those things. Uh, René Descartes was another prominent philosopher. Um, he is best known in the context of psychology for uh, dualism, the idea that mind and body are separate entities that interact to produce sensations, emotions, and other conscious experiences. Uh, people tend not to describe to a dualist sort of way of thinking now. People are more, you know, rooted in things like a biological basis of behavior. Because we know so much more about how things work now, we tend not to see the mind and, and brain and body as being sort of a separate entity. Um, Descartes had some interesting ideas, for example, that the, the soul was housed in the uh, pineal gland, which would sort of um, exert its influence over the, the physical body uh, in that way. Um, because we know a bit more about how things work now, we tend not to dis subscribe to uh, dualist ideas. Uh, Wilhelm Wundt had the first sort of proper psychology lab, um, he defines psychology as the science of mental life. Uh, he uh, mostly did what we would call psychometric sort of experiments, measuring things like um, reaction times and, and stuff like that, uh, using the sort of uh, careful measurement and observation in his laboratory. So it's the first real um, psychological lab. Uh, the next person we're talking about is Edward Titchener, who was really interested in how the mind works. Um, looking at, at really, really basic sensory and perceptual processes. Uh, he relied a lot, as, as many researchers did early on, on introspection, which was basically the observation of one's own thought processes, so sort of looking in and thinking about uh, what you're thinking. Uh, as it turns out, people are surprisingly really bad at introspection. Um, they're awfully, often inaccurate uh, and unaware of, of many processes. We'll actually talk about a lot of instances throughout the semester when we're wrong about how we're thinking about things. Uh, there's also a high sense of confirmation bias. Uh, people tend to say what they think they want the um, observer to hear. People are unreliable. They're not as objective as they think. And it doesn't work well for all populations. Uh, William James uh, was very interested in why the mind works the way it does. Uh, he did this by studying uh, higher thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and wondered what functions they might serve. He was heavily influenced by um, sort of Darwinian ideas on how behaviors might help us adapt, so sort of an evolutionary psychology type perspective. I don't want to spend too much time talking about um, all of these old names, but I do want to mention a few other prominent early psychologists, including uh, G. Stanley Hall, who had the first psychological lab in the United States over at Johns Hopkins, just across the bay. He also went on to find the uh, APA, the American Psychological Association. Also, uh, Francis Sumner was the first African-American to receive a PhD in psychology, which was awarded by Clark University in 19... Unfortunately and unsurprisingly, um, the field of psychology wasn't very fair to, to women early on. Uh, for example, Mary Calkins uh, was the first female president of the APA, who uh, in her lifetime was denied a PhD from Harvard um, because of, of her uh, sex. Uh, likewise, Margaret Washburn uh, was the first female PhD, um, she was barred membership from uh, several professional organizations, again, because she was a woman. The last big early name that we're going to talk about uh, is Sigmund Freud and uh, the movement of psychoanalysis. This was a personality theory and form of psychotherapy, which relied heavily on ideas of um, personality and behavior arising from unconscious conflict. Um, this emphasized things like uh, sexual and aggressive nature of unconscious processes. Um, this was extremely influential and, and still is today, uh, and probably even more so controversial. Um, the form of psychoanalytic theory that exists today, the psychodynamic perspective, is a more modern perspective based on some of those early ideas that abandoned some of the more extreme and unscientific ideas that Freud had. 
Okay, that's where we're going to stop for this mini lecture. Uh, next time we're going to pick up with a discussion of um, some of the more modern movements.